welcome back viewer to art history in our previous lesson we developed patterns for a straight skirt these are the patterns that we produced we produced the back patterns of a skirt we developed them on the chalkboard but in this class they are already separated we've separated the patterns out we've got the back pattern and as we said in our previous lesson We've got the two dots highlighted with a notch. We've got the hip line, it's clearly marked. And then we've got the back, the center back of our skirt marked. We've also the front pattern, whereby the hip line is shown. We've got only one dot in the front. And then we've got the center front line, and this is the hip line. And as we said, our skirt, it's to knee, waist to knee. It is just a length of knee length. And then from there, once we cut out, separate out our skirts, we need to transfer this block to another block whereby we are going to include the seam allowances. And then for us to be in a position to allow for seam allowances, we need to square out a line using your pencil. You square out a straight line. Then you place your skirt there. and you trace it out. It is important you show the darts as we did previously. So you trace out your darts carefully and you show the notches in your pattern. You need to show the notches clearly. You trace out along the hip. You also mark the hip line with a pencil. You trace out with a pencil to ensure that you can be in a position to make quick corrections if need be. So in drafting it is important to use pencils so that in case of any issue you can always transfer. And it is also important to note that we need to transfer the darts, the length of the dart to the new pattern. So I will mark, I will pin, pin out the darts as they are there. So we've got our back skirt. I will join the, the hip line with a pencil and then remember to join my darts as I had already marked. So that is my first dart. That is my second dart. I label that this is my hip line. Then this is my center back line. So this is the back skirt. It's important to underline your work. So from here, we need to increase, to increase the seam allowances. Remember the seam allowances? Without the seam allowances, then our skirt will be smaller than the expected size. So we need to increase the seam allowances. And in our lesson, we say that the seam allowances will be determined by the kind of fabric you are using. For instance, if you are using a fabric that slips so easily, it is not firm, it is a light fabric. You need to give an extra seam allowance so that you can accommodate the slippage of this fabric. In this case, we are going to give it along the center back, we are going to give an extra allowance of one inch. So you will measure one inch using your tape measure. And this one inch will allow us to accommodate for the vent, slit, and the zip insertion. We have to attach the zip. So I'll measure one inch along the center back, one inch. And in a tape measure, remember we've got two sides. We've the centimeter side and we've got the inches side. The inch side is wider. 
and with bigger numbers. So this is the inch. So when you are using, don't confuse to use centimeters instead of the inches. The inches are wider than the centimeters. So I'm using the wider part of my tape measure, which is the inch. So once I give, me, I give that allowance, I will use my L square, or you can even use a meter rule to join these lines together. You can do a continuous line, I'm a dotted lines, to indicate the same allowances. That is for the back. And for the hemline, I will also give it another one inch for this M allowance. So I'll measure one inch along the hemline. And once again, I join these dots. At the side seam, because we don't have any, it's only stitching, we don't have a zip, neither do we have a, a vent, we'll only give it 0 0.5 of an inch for stitching purposes. So in this, this part of the tape measure, this is from 2 to 3, this is an inch, so at the center it's a half, so I will measure half of this. I measure half of an inch for my seam allowances. Along the straight lines which can be joined, I'll use my ruler, the meter rule, to join these lines. So for the hip line, remember, we need also to do the 0 0.5 of an inch. You need to mark that. And then using your hip, hip curve, you need to join this. Remember, you can notice that we are not using a ruler because along the hip, it's not a straight line. It is curved. And therefore, we need to use a curve to ob uh, achieve this line along the hip. So that is that. Then at the waistline, because this is an enclosed seam and we don't need a lot of bulky there, we also do 0 0.5 of an inch. So I will use once again the hip curve to be in a position to achieve this. Remember along the waist it's not straight so we have to use a curve to achieve this. And at the notches you also have to show the notch and move on. So in this cut, this is a complete pattern, ready for cutting. So what we need to do with this pattern, we only need to indicate the cut number, the cut number, and in our case, we are cutting two patterns, because in our skirt, we've got two pattern pieces, one for the right and another one for the left. So this is complete for cutting, and we can move on to produce another pattern for the front skirt. 
So what do we do with the front skirt? The front skirt in this pattern is just a basic pattern without any seam allowance. So we need to transfer this to another fabric and be in a position to come up with a skirt with seam allowances. So I will get this pattern and I will measure again my centimeters, uh, the measurements in inches and realize it is important to note that we only do inches along the hip, we give it 0 0.5. At the front, the center front, because our skirt is not on, it doesn't have a seam, we will do, we will decade the center front line. So I will pick this for demonstration purposes and then I'll do the same. So that will be in a position to know exactly what is happening. We are going to square out a straight line just the way we did it to the back and then I will pick my skirt and place it on this line, the already squared out line. This is the line that we've squared out. That is a straight line, so I'll place my front, the center front of the skirt along this straight line to ensure that our skirt drapes very well and it is able to hang on the body well. So once again, I will pick the lines and join them. I have to notice where the dart is and show it by pencil. You trace along the hip line. Once again, you mark, show the hip, move to the knee length. And then along the hem line, you also need to mark. So that is the hip line, we've got the darts. And I also have to mark the dart, where the dart length, the dart is. You have to make a mark there. So I will join these darts. Remember at the front, our dart was two centimeters wide and two and 10 centimeters uh, long. So from here to here, it's 10 centimeters. From here, two centimeters wide. And then we need to join the hip line with our ruler to ensure that our lines are okay and they are good. And the hem line and the hip line should, most of the time, it's dictated. I, we, we've got some client with a low hip line and others with a standard hip line. So it's important always to note where your hem line is. This is our center front line. This is our hemline. This is our waistline. So it is important to note that in a skirt, we've got three very important lines. We've got a waistline, we've got the hip line, and the hemline. With those three major lines, you are able to move. So just the way we did with our back, we were able to increase an allowance, a stitching allowance of 0 0.5 of an inch, one inch along the hemline, and then one inch along the center back line. And this was for a reason. It is because the back has two parts. But in this case, our front only has one continuous line. So in this case, we are going to only add allowances along the side seam of our skirt, so which is 0 0.5. So you have to mark the 0 0.5 at intervals, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then you also mark one inch for the hemline. And the straight lines can always be joined with a ruler. And remember we are marking this with broken lines along the hip 
we don't use a straight li uh, line, but we use the hip, hip curve to be in a position to get a smooth line, a smooth curve. That's a smooth curve. Along the waistline, we also mark 0 0.5 and we also give it a broken line. And remember we said along this waistline, we do a broken uh, uh, 0 0.5. It is because it is a hidden seam and we don't need a lot of bulky along the waist. So that's our skirt. You also indicate your grain line. And this line indicates that our skirt must be placed on fold. It is skirt one because our C skirt doesn't have a seam, therefore I have to indicate a place on fold mark along the center front line. So this la la mark shows placing on fold. So there will be no seam. So because there's no seam, there would be a seam allowance either. We've got a hem allowance of one inch. Very important that we include this hem allowance. And then we join these lines. So this is our complete pattern. We've already produced these patterns. And as we said, in producing the patterns, you have to follow a systematic step, systematic steps to be in a position to come out with clear patterns so that if any other person is to use your pattern, will not have any issues. It is important also to note that along the hip, you need to indicate the notch so that somebody will be in a position to know that is the notch. You also indicate the same at the front to show a notch so that as you cut you know that is the hip line so that is how your skirt will appear it has been a, a nice lesson learning on how to increase our seam allowances separating the skirt blocks from the made block and now in this lesson we are in a position to understand how the seam allowances are uh, brought out about, how the darts are transferred, and this has to be transferred even to the skirt itself. As you are cutting the fabric, it is important to note that all these allowances have to be transferred. It has been well teaching you. Thank you so much, and let's meet in the next lesson. Thank you. <laughs>